just had something to eat, so this picture shouldn't be too enticing for you. The conversation uh, tonight is supposed to be about how food relates to teaching concepts of biology, but really it's about love and relationship. Let me see if I can make those connections for you. Humans have basic needs, air, water, shelter, maybe companions and, of course, food. This is the need that we are consumed with most often. We think about food every day. And for some of us, we think about food all day, every day. It's so fundamental to our existence that we are co-evolved with food in many ways. It directs our consumption and guides the physiological processes that help us extract energy from it. It might be said that everything you see on the screen before us is nature's way of gathering energy from the sun and delivering it to us in a most desirable way. So how, did, how is food related to where we are now with our great civilizations and expanding human population? You all recognize this from school. This is the fertile crescent of uh, the ancient Middle East, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, of current day Iraq, the Nile of Egypt, where 10,000 years ago or so, humans began to settle in communities around farms. They domesticated the native plants that were highly nutritious, produced abundant seed that could be stored, and then planted again in the next season for an annual harvest. And the simple story tells us that because of this abundant and local food resource, that led to other pursuits that developed technological advancements the arts, and the organization of social hierarchies and communities. Let's go even further back. Was human evolution and the eventual development of technology purely related to food? Well, not completely, but it's likely that the drive to satiate our hunger had an important impact on things like carrying food from place to place and running upright in pursuit of prey. These were all related to the necessity of food. And that hand axe, it fits really nicely with an opposable thumb, and along with other uh, primitive tools, was involved with killing game and processing it. With the, with the domestication of plants that led to technologies like this uh, sickle, this clay sickle from ancient Sumeria, none of this would have been possible had we not been able to domesticate plants and farm animals that gave humans the gift of time. Our societies have grown up around food, and so food is intimately involved in the way that we relate with each other. Our families, friends, and communities have developed food rituals in subtle and significant ways. Think about the major gatherings in your life, summer picnics, religious holidays, Big sports gatherings, weddings, and funerals too. Food is central to them all. Every ethnic group has its diverse sources of good nutrition that represent the diversity of life on our planet. So we are connected deeply, if not knowingly, to the natural world. And food is central to so many as other aspects of our life. Think about our concern and welfare for others through education about things like healthy uh, nutrition and good food. And our humanitarian efforts, such as food drives, food banks, uh, disaster relief efforts, and distribution of food to the needy around the planet. Currently, almost of the seven billion people on Earth, over half are hungry. Those who study global conflict and security list food, energy, and water as the tension points that will erupt into the global conflicts of the future. As an example, an ignition point of the Egyptian uprising that toppled the Mubarak regime, one of the aspects that 
that made a difference there was a lack of access to a significant food resource, namely rice. This is a sad testimony. Egypt is home to the Great Nile River, which was one of the original agricultural producers on our planet. And Egypt's not alone. 37 other countries in the world currently face critical food shortages. In addition to that, many of our environmental problems are all about the way that industrial agriculture produces food. Things like excessive energy use, water pollution, air pollution, and toxic al algal blooms, to name just a few. So if we consider all of these facts, it's amazing that food education isn't more central to our education system. Think about it. Having access to plentiful, good, healthy, and nutritious food brings so much contentment to people. And it allows them to engage much more constructively in community. And this isn't to say that we don't talk about food in our education system. It's just not a central focus. One easy solution to this is simply to change the theme of what we do with the courses we currently offer. So for me, as a biology teacher, I'm going to change the theme of my course so that I'm teaching bio biology through the lens of food. Food biology is a science course, and it represents just one small piece of the puzzle toward improving our relationship with food, and more broadly, our relationship with nature. All of the concepts of biology can be taught through projects that, that ultimately produce a valuable food product for our community. And as an added benefit, since crops grow in the summer and need tending then, it extends the school year, thereby enhancing and solidifying concepts learned during the rest of, of the traditional school months. And not only that, but as students are learning the science, they're doing valuable and productive work that is their work. As they deliver the fruits and the vegetables of their labors, they begin to make better connections between themselves and the natural world, and they facilitate a connection with people and the land. As they produce food for themselves and others, they begin to see that biology is at least as much about connections with community, human happiness, and a healthy respect for the land as it is about learning biological concepts. And after all, community is a biological concept. Happiness can be thought of as a desirable animal behavior, and a healthy respect for the land is a necessary condition for conservation and sustainability. The point of food biology isn't to produce a world full of organic farmers. After all, we need artists and engineers, bankers, business people, educators, organizers, scholars, and, yes, even politicians. But it doesn't hurt for us to have more people who think like farmers. You know, problem solvers, innovators, and risk takers. And better yet, students begin to learn where their food comes from and how their food resources are connected with natural cycles and with a healthy environment. At the end of the day and the beginning, and the middle, we all have to eat. And food biology helps our youth gain an understanding of the concepts of biology, but maybe more importantly, introduces them to connections with community, concern for their environment, a more healthy respect for food and the great outdoors. And these are all important pieces of developing a much more healthy curiosity about the wonders of the natural world. We all love to share a good meal with family and friends, so why not teach more about food? Thank you. <laughs>